Yo, full band tonight. So oh, much full band. Full house. You got uh, us all. It's not often that we're, it's not often almost, that we're almost, in the same room together. Mm -hmm. like it happens maybe like once a week max. Like, <laughs> so much room packed. So, oh, oh. So, much, <laughs> so, <laughs> so much room. Period. Don't forget about period. the Oh, yeah, no, period. Not period. <laughs> yeah, I wasn't What's expecting up, this. Was not expecting this because uh, last time we kind of chatted, it was just Derek and Andrew. So I'm glad to have the whole crew here. Not Derek yeah. and Andrew. Andrew. It was Eric, and Eric. It was Eric and Andrew. Eric. And Andrew, yeah. Yes. Yes. That was a while Eric, ago. Eric. Derek. I think we were like, was were you on the cusp of fatherhood when that happened? I think I was. Yeah, I was on the cusp. He was. Yeah. Okay. yeah now, 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 now you're like deep, dude. Now, uh, <laughs> Elliot is like. Almost 13 months. Mm -hmm. And Isaac's entering the terrible twos. Yeah. <laughs> Time okay. flies, man. Yeah, already a year. Well, I want to get into that. And we'll, we'll get into that. Yeah, but please. I want to I talk about what we're here to talk about quickly first. Of course. Which is the band So Much yes. Hope Buried. Yeah, sir. A lot of, lot, of, uh, lot of things happening right now. Yeah. There was a lot oh, of yeah. things going on. We, we decided to just kind of like throw it all out at the same time and just see what sticks but well, yeah yeah we just came out with a new single called vacant home mm -hmm. featuring mochi naga from fall of tears that guy's awesome mm -hmm. communication was great because he is he currently resides in japan and speaks japanese so uh eric's actually in the middle of learning japanese so he was him <laughs> and derek were basically our main communicators I don't know how to, like, I, I stayed out of it because I'm like, I'm going to screw something up and this guy's going to think that I'm weird. <laughs> well, it was, it was really cool because um, he knew more English than, than the, the, any of us know Japanese. Okay. <laughs> so yeah, it was mostly conversations in English, mm -hmm. uh, but it was really funny because when we were saying like, Hey man, when do you think you're going to be able to get your part like recorded and sent to us? He sent us back something that was like, I should have it shot by this time. And we were like, is he shooting video? <laughs> yeah. I was like, what's going on here? <laughs> I remember like, so like the language barrier was a little funny, but it was, uh, I remember it all worked we, out. we initially reached out to another Japanese artist. Yeah. And I, and I remember like the response was just like, uh, it was something along the lines of like, sorry, English is very poor. Best of luck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That was it. Cause there's, there's a couple Japanese bands that we like a lot, but it's funny because I think like, I think Mochi Naga works super well in it because his style of screaming or vocals was kind of similar to this old era of us. Yes. So it's like kind of a nod to like the old stuff, but still. But way more Asian. <laughs> well, let's yeah. get into that because, uh, yeah, sure. I mean, you guys have definitely kind of transitioned into a different sound. Oh, yes. yeah. Um, and, and, you know, as you approach the, this, this new single, uh, the record, uh, is due out on May 17th. Yes. Uh, first full length studio album. What, what, uh, t talk about that. I mean, what's, why the change? Why the, why the, so, yeah, I got it. All right. We, we have a, uh, we had a member, you know, a couple member changes, uh, no more screamer, no, uh, and then a bass player change. And, um, you know, as the three of us, me, Andrew, and Derek were chatting, we were like, do we get someone to replace our screamer? And then at some point, we were like, why don't we just become a different genre? Who cares? Mm -hmm. You know, like, the genre doesn't matter. What was super important to us is that we just stuck with us, right? right. It was just me, Andrew, and Derek at the time. And uh, we were like, let's just write music. I don't care what it sounds mm -hmm. like. So we kind of stuck within this this vein of... um melodramatic like kind of like the darker yeah the perfect way how did we describe it earlier today it, literally it was, emo it was just like it was emotional <laughs> yeah it was just like sad music sad music with positive lyrics yeah you know like, like so, trying to generalize it there. yeah so we kind of <laughs> stuck within like that genre but you know ultimately we didn't really care so on this new record coming out in may there's a lot of genre kind of hops mm -hmm. and i don't think it's like it's not like offensively genre hopping mm -hmm. you know like some sometimes you know you've got these you know these bands that that kind of like really go from like the most insane yeah, kind of music like genres and thousand. we're but doing it, it like yeah. effectively yeah and i, th I think it really works. what our boundaries are yeah and when you listen to the album it's not uh it, it's um i think the genre changes happen 
really nicely and really gradually within the music and nothing is just like a hard cut from one thing to another thing. Um, and then I don't think like even one song sounds super similar. Like it definitely sounds right. like us, you know, yeah. like I think it's a cohesive record and it sounds like us, but it doesn't feel like, Oh, every song is just a copy paste of, of, of the, you know, okay. the other songs. Yeah. So like, you know, we came out with apparition, which is just a one-off. So that's not even on this record. And, um, you know, that has a certain sound to it and we love it. Um, but we didn't want to write like, 10 apparitions mm -hmm. you know we wanted to write a cohesive record that had a lot of ups and downs dynamically you know every the order of the record is is was meti meticulous excuse me mm -hmm. um so you know there, there's a lot of intentionality to it yeah and you know just kind of touching on what eric said there was at some point there was uh like a creative shift in, in like the mindset of the band where there was just like this this unifying we all kind of looked at each other and and there was like, I am going to respect whatever you want to do. So if you come up with this idea, uh, we're going to try to push that idea forward. And like, and it's funny because at the end of the day, we're all, we're all songwriters. And so there was just this unifying agreement of everyone's ideas. And it's very interesting being in that predicament because a lot of, I feel like, like nine times out of 10 in bands, there's like, this established, like, this is what the sound is. We're going to roll with that. Everyone try to write to what that is. But, like, we just basically said yes to everything. Oh, yeah. And, and then just moved forward with it all. So this is definitely just, like, this cohesive collaboration of all these different ideas coming from all these different places. So it's cool. Well, I feel like it's a little more universally consumable. Yes. Oh my God! Yeah. Oh, compared yeah. to what it the was, stuff? yes, yeah. absolutely. <laughs> yeah, yes. So, like I said, we we lost our screamer, and we were just like, Derek is such a phenomenal singer. Like, mm. we don't need a screamer. Yeah, just right. like sing. The the, sing. the original, you know, <laughs> iteration of this band, there was a clear understanding that we were in a bubble. Um, and we, we wanted, we understood that entirely. We we're just like, we knew the is, niche. We knew, yeah, we knew yeah. the niche and we were like, this is going to turn some people off, but we're having a good time. So whatever. Yeah. And then it's funny. Cause it's, it was just like with the shift change, it's obviously singing is more publicly, yeah. ge generally Commercially. publicly more appreciated. Yeah. <laughs> so with that alone, it was just kind of like, okay, you guys, I, I kind of dig this more. So like yeah. we we statistically saw like a rise like okay more people get a lot of people are turned off by screaming yeah which is what it is so like suddenly we we kind of took that away and there was just like oh we we saw an increase in our audience cool yeah, yeah. <laughs> you have to be like in a in a certain mindset at least for me I had to be in yeah. a certain mindset and honestly um, believe it or not as angry as I look or seem sometimes <laughs> I'm really not an angry person. <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> and i need to be angry like to be listening to that style of music i'm kind of right there with you yeah. I, i'll be like full disclosure and i've said this in the past i joined the band initially um just like looking at everyone saying like this is a great group of guys and i just want to be a part of this to have a good time i i didn't join because i'm like this is this is next level music or anything like that i joined because i was just like these are great people playing playing music and i just want to be a part of it, it was like fun when you joined the band <laughs> I think there was only one song written. There was, yeah. Right? And there was like barely any guitar in it. <laughs> and I joined as the guitar player. Yeah, it was just, yeah. It was just written as a piano piece. Um, and uh, yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. Basically Derek it. plays piano yeah. and sings. Mm -hmm. Was that word? Well, I think that's what really kind of, uh, you, know, you know, you say you haven't lost everything completely. And I think the, the mainstay obviously is Derek and his voice and vocals yes. and the oh, piano. Yeah. Yes. So you haven't well, lost. Well, like, we uh, always call Derek the X factor as much as he doesn't want to be it. He's the glue. <laughs> He's the glue. He is. Literally the, the, the centerpiece. I try. I try. I don't know what to say. Yeah. <laughs> That's all right. Hundred <laughs> percent. Listen, we have we we have we have pulled him apart and like made sure we got every ounce of talent out of him on this record. Yeah, you'll so, hear it. <laughs> I, wouldn't, I wouldn't have been able we've to do any of like it without towel. these we've two guys. We've all, all of the talent. We're like, we're making sure we're getting all of this. Because <laughs> he's kind well, of closed off and we had to pull it out of him. What was that? Well, it's funny too, because I thought like, because uh, Eric, you were in a band or maybe are still in a band called Toothless. So I thought yep. that, that that aggressiveness kind of just kind of like came with you from that and that was kind of like your thing and and i know andrew kind of dabbles in 
a variety of different things. Um, yes, yeah. So does so does Derek. I know that you guys had kind of have like a like a punk thing going or something. All over the place. Don't worry. Like, well, yeah, the, yeah. <laughs> previous bands with like pop punk and uh, Fresh Steps. Fresh, Fresh Steps. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yes, yeah. sir. I was a big fan of that. That's funny. <laughs> we got the one thing. I like. Well, listen, whenever, whenever the next single comes, whether that be you know one year or ten years from now, it'll it'll happen. Don't worry, I'll do it just for you. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, I, this probably isn't funny to, to say to you and Elise, but like I was, I don't know why. No, please. <laughs> but Fresh Steps always reminded me of Cat Litter. That's exactly That's why it was named that. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> you hit the nail on that, dude. I literally so you know my cat. I, yes. I, I'm very Orange public boy, about right? my cat. Yeah, so <laughs> literally, I was like, so the song came like, so I'll I'll dabble in the fresh steps territory really quick for you, just for your sake. Okay. <laughs> song was just a demo. Existed. I I'm a songwriter. It's who I am at my core. It just existed. I'm like, this is cool. Let me just. It's it's like COVID. I'm like, let's just. I just want to do something with this just for fun. Uh, and so I didn't care about it. And, uh, I wrote the song, I recorded it at Eric's studio. Um, and then literally I remember like trying to create this entity out of it. And I just looked at my cat and then looked at the litter next to him. Like, that's it. That's it. We're calling it there. <laughs> <All right. laughs> that was the end of that. So <laughs> shot a video and everything. Mm -hmm. Oh, I went all in. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm in that video. You are in that video. <laughs> yeah. Just to keep, keep in mind, completely, like, in my brain, Fresh Steps just exists, like, fictitiously. Like, <laughs> I just create, it was it was for the funsies. Like, it's... <laughs> Dude, you, you resonated with people. Some people really like that. Mm -hmm. I love that song. I got one. See? Yeah. <laughs> I got at least one. <laughs> well, I mean, from a, a band standpoint, as, you know, so much hope buried, you know, obviously... It's a collection of of you know musicians and, and writers and things like that. How did you guys kind of get together? Was it an accident? Was it um, just respect out of each other? Like how did that? Uh, everyone's pointing at Derek. It was Derek. Yeah, it was, okay. it was all Derek. Factor. Like you said, he is the glue. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it kind of stems with me and the uh, former vocalist, and uh, you know, he wanted. Uh, we we dove into this subgenre called melodic hardcore, which is just very um, ambient melodic sounds with spoken word, poetry, and screaming. And uh, and I saw the potential in his voice and his uh, words, so I decided to um, you know write something very melancholy on the piano and uh he did some spoken word with that and then um obviously uh, then that's when my mind came to a guitar player and of course i thought of andrew because he's a great person and a tangent off super quick because I, I, I love telling this story um i was working in banking at the time and i was on the lunch break and I just remember I was like, I was chatting with a coworker and then I literally just get a call. And in the span of three and a half minutes, it, the conversation just goes, Hey man, um, you interested in just being in this band? And I was like, yep. <laughs> Hang up. I, I, I just looked at, I looked at the coworker and I'm like, I guess I'm in another band. That's, that's how it started. <laughs> well, I want to go back really quick. Cause Derek's like, you know, I, I need a guitar player. And, uh, he said, Andrew's just a really great guy. And a great guitar player. <laughs> <laughs> and a great guy. <laughs> Not the best guitar player, but I, I, I appreciate that. Wrong. I just, I just thought it was funny the best. Led with, led with just he's a great guy. Great guy. Great guy. Yeah. He's a guitar player, and uh, I'll, I'll settle. <laughs> yeah. And then we wrote a song called Desert Child, and uh, my brother uh, did a lot of mixing and mastering, but we needed a place to record vocals, and I was like, of course, Eric – so we went to Eric and I asked him to be in the band and he's like, yeah, I don't have time for that. And, uh, <laughs> but eventually he did. Um, well, so I remember, um, I remember you asked me and I was definitely like, this is really cool. Um, was I married yet? Was no, I, no, I was, I was definitely like no. getting married. So oh, like maybe. I, I, don't I ran a lot of decisions through Sarah and I was like, man, I was like, this is a really cool song. I like this a lot, but like, I just don't know how much, like, time I have, so on and so forth. Um, and I eventually told you guys, I was like, okay, like, I, I want to be in the band. I want to do it. But I just, I don't know how much I can give to it right now. So I, I will I will play drums for you. And that's kind of just, like, where we were at at the time. And, um, I mean, now, like, we're 
pushing like crazy, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. for this record. I mean, we we poured our heart and souls into this. Yeah. So Absolutely. it's just kind of funny how it goes from like, well, I don't I don't really know how much time I can dedicate to this to like, you know, full full yeah. gung ho. And uh like it was nice to see some like success, I guess, quote unquote, right. with like and, uh, apparition you know, and so on and so forth. So it's kind of resonating yeah. off of like the great guy quote. The great, great guy. <laughs> the great guy. There, there's something. There, there's something within that, though. That it was just yeah. like we we ended up prospering, such such a strong bond and such a relationship that we just it just felt natural to yeah. just to kind of be like okay, like we've all been down the band roads. Oh yeah. We all clearly have this mutual respect for each other. Oh yeah. And so we just kind of you know we kind of stuck it out, and then all of a sudden everything just kind of grew on its own. Yeah. And it's, fe- it's fe- everything has felt very natural. Super. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And we all got super close really fast. Like r- unbelievably fast. Like really fast. Yeah. It's because even though Andrew lives an hour from me, uh, he would hang out after practice mm-hmm. for like hours and we would just talk until like 1 a.m. Yeah. And then we started a podcast. I think we- and then we had you on it. <laughs> well, I remember that because we, we talked longer than most of your conversations. And then when we were yes. done, we talked more. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And, we, uh, that's yeah. us. We need to have the updated dad cast soon. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. absolutely. It's a whole different world. It is. <laughs> I just have a whole lot more bags now under my eyes. <laughs> so much <laughs> bags. So much <laughs> bags. I'm a so, dead inside. I'm going to call referencing me just so much weight added ah uh, oh yeah <laughs> so much weight Dude, I gained. gained like i gained like 30 pounds or something and uh i like i wasn't eating poorly but i i swear it's because i wasn't sleeping mm-hmm. oh yeah 100 percent. i you know? i blame my daughter for the 25 to 30 pounds that i gained um <laughs> it has nothing to do with the fact that i'm 41 or nonsense that i uh <laughs> Eat like a raccoon out of a garbage can. Uh, <laughs> it's definitely her fault and the lack of sleep. But you we'll get to my that. territory and just go like kind of psychotic into fitness land. Yeah, we'll get to <laughs> that too. Yeah, we'll no get thanks. to that too. <laughs> yeah. But talk but, uh, about this this song. Um, it's yeah. called "Vacant Home." Um, yes, sir. It's it's uh, is it fair to say it's an emotional song? Outside of yeah. obviously yeah. the. Lyrically or musically? Both. Both, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I to- totally agree. Yeah, yeah, I would definitely, definitely say agree. so. Um, I mean, I don't honestly, what are the lyrics? <laughs> <laughs> what yeah, lyrics I mean, it's, it's literally just like, um, it's about, you know, uh, somebody, it's a fictional story about somebody who loses a loved one or is at like the end of a relationship. But I like uh, kind of clearing remnants of, memories cherished memories in a house and uh that's where the idea came from but like i've always wanted to write a song about like just like using metaphors for an abandoned house that's okay. literally it so like just met- metaphors around like loss right oh, i love yeah i love yeah you could say that right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah i mean that's Derek's pretty much it and ridiculous uh, with his lyricism yeah yeah i actually Derek's a phenomenal lyricist <laughs> even though he doesn't believe in himself but um i think it's definitely a new thing though for me. <laughs> I you know, I think from the music standpoint, um, it's the song off the record with the like the longest drawn out mellow parts. Mm-hmm. There's no other song in this record that has like super like this the verses are pretty long. Very long. Of just yeah, like it's a long song. Pads almost, and ambience and yeah. building. And this is like the yeah. And it was funny because I was just having a, a conversation with someone about it the other day about how like there is at least in my brain, vacant home was the clear introduction to the record. So like it made sense that to put it out first because I looked at it as almost like me personally, I looked at it as like the, the gateway to the record. So it was just kind of like it, it has pop sensibility, but it's also like almost five minutes long. And it's hard to digest. Yeah. But I was just like, I kind of don't care about that because it's the intro. I, like, yeah. It's, I think is, if you can get behind Vacant Home, mm-hmm. you can get behind the rest of the record yeah. easy. Because it's it's yeah. not like it's not written with the intention of like to catch your ears immediately, which is totally fine because yeah, it's 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 creating something bigger. Is is the artistic goal? Yeah. It's it's part of the whole vision. 
if yeah. you will, <laughs> top to bottom of the whole record, you know? Mm. Musically, it definitely like captures that um, idea that we have for just writing and the rest of the whole album being the dynamics of it. Um, oh, yeah. And it, like very, very Absolutely. like um, uh, very powerful and then instantly just like calm and yeah, yeah, ambient and then powerful, powerful again and that's kind of i like the whole album i and then japanese mm. screaming <laughs> right which is I, the coolest thing in the I world i love being like i love being the, like this is the first band that i am i'm the guitar player in so it's like uh and you know i my initial instrument was the guitar i i took up singing in a lot of the roles that i ended up playing because it was one of the situations we need a singer i'm your guy don't worry i got it but this is one where i could actually like and in a live setting, fully embrace the fact that I'm the guitar player. And I love this song for the, the fact that like, I love taking, I love, I love the dynamic roller coaster of it. Mm. I love to be able to like, yeah. during this, during the quiet parts, I could like kind of shield myself away as the guitar player. Yeah. And then, then like during the chorus, I can just kind of like explode. explode. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because most of the verse is led by ambience, mm -hmm. which actually is a really cool thing that Derek does with a reverb pedal in his piano. So you would almost think that it's a synth when you hear us live, um, but it's actually just a normal piano sound and then sent through um, a swell reverb. So all the attack is basically taken out. So when he hits it, there is no like, boom, he hits it and it just goes... Yeah, you know, yeah, like, yeah. it's very swelly and it sounds like a synth um but yeah so he he basically leads that even though it's not like a lead instrument yeah. he's like creating this ambience around us he's creating and this, i don't yeah. even play for the oh, first half of each know. verse we're like, just kind of immersed in in the space of the keyboard. Yeah, and I, yeah, and then I just kind of take a back seat until I start building up with toms. Mm -hmm. And even at that, like I'm not like super yeah. playing until like the verse comes in yeah. where I just hit the or I'm sorry the chorus, hit a big old snare. Yeah, and then just go. I think it. it's funny because like I feel like this quite this we're we're alluding to the fact that like to understand this band we really really encourage that you see it live. <laughs> yeah. It's it's funny because that wasn't even the question. But I feel, like, I feel like that's exactly what we're getting at. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's fair. I think yeah. that's very fair. Mm -hmm. And people can it's do a good that. Introduction. Yes, it's the lowest of the lows and the highest of the highs for us. I think. Yes. Like honestly, all in one like, track. Yeah, yeah. It, it's literally immersive. got the lowest of our dynamics, and then that bridge is Peak. like the highest of our dynamics of yeah. like blast beats and screaming. Yeah. Right. Which is like the only one with screaming. Right. Spoiler alert, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We so we we wanted to stick away from that. Um, you know, from screaming, obviously in general, because we're this new band, but the we the just kind of like was a nod. The, the yeah. Yeah. And, and the appeal was the he's Japanese and this is gonna be sick. <laughs> <laughs> what what's with uh because you said you tried to get two Japanese uh yeah. It was is there a significance to that? Um, two bands that we like a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So we just like, we I like the, the bands. We reached out to the one, um, just because I guess, uh, I was already following him on Instagram mm -hmm. and, uh, and he was, yeah, he got back to me. It was just like, I don't speak English. Mm -hmm. So no. <laughs> and I was like, I, I and what's funny is I responded to him in Japanese yeah. and he never got back to me. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, that's fine. And then we reached out to who, who ended up making it on the record is, uh, Mochinaga. And, um, he said kind of the same thing where he was like, I don't really speak English. Um, but I want to do it. And we were like, yeah. all right. So it's, we, you know, and it's funny. Cause like, I remember we, we were talking about this earlier about how, um, it feels like we've been around the block for a while at this point. So expanding our musical palette, however we can excites us. So there was something, there was something about utilizing the language barrier that was like, this feels like foreign territory legitimately that, <laughs> that, that we're treading on. And like, Unintended. It's, it's, it's exciting. So I, you know, that, that was just a, a good feeling. Cause I remember, I remember we got the, the initial tracks from Mochinaga and I remember Eric saying something along the lines of like, this is, this feels, this feels fresh on like all of our behalves. Mm. Like, oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And it really pushed Sarah 
because Sarah ended up with the help of people on Reddit and Derek and myself subtitling everything in the video. Mm -hmm. So every, th every word that's sung in English is subtitled in Japanese, hopefully correctly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No one said anything yet. <laughs> and then everything uh, that Mochinaga did in Japanese is subtitled in English. So that's I, pretty sick. I did notice that. And I wasn't sure what the, uh, I don't know if I ever got to the, the vocals of his. Yeah. But yeah, no, it, it, it flips around when we get to his part. I thought like I saw, I remember seeing that and I was like, for me, that, that was the X factor. That was I, was, I looked, I looked like I would, the moment I saw the subtitles, I was like, yep. I was yeah, like, that, that complete, that just took it from a hundred to 150 for me. I don't know what any of that. I, like, yeah, I thought there was something about it. <laughs> 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 Um, but the clever. way I found uh, I, I I found Fall of Tears um, by diving into that that melodic hardcore subgenre and um, and uh, I'm a type of person who loves to create playlists on Spotify and when I get into a genre like I do research on trying to find other bands that sound similar to that and um, I found uh, there is uh, melodic hardcore is huge in Japan and Indonesia. So um, we have like a little following in Indonesia. Yeah, yeah guys. we do because of the record that we don't play anymore. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> but, um, but so, yeah, that's why I, we just reached out to him and uh, and hopefully we can help skyrocket their career as well. Yeah, that's cool. awesome. Yeah. Cross Talk about the video. Uh, really well done. Um, that's a, a Sarah's great. Thing. <laughs> Sarah, yeah. Yep. Yep. Sarah did it. Yep. <laughs> Talk about that. Sarah is your wife, the, the mother of your child. She is the greatest woman ever. That's Close to my mom. <laughs> <laughs> it's a different plane. <laughs> but yeah, so um, my wife, videographer, my wife. Um, my wife. She, she <laughs> yeah, <laughs> she shoots all of our music videos. And uh, again, spoiler alert, every song off this record is going to have a video. Uh, okay. So she took that task on, which was a huge undertaking. Um, but so far, she's absolutely killing it. And um, yeah, so we shot Vacant Home uh, in Shikshini mm -hmm. in, in an old, probably oh. weren't allowed to be in house. Mm -hmm. We uh, found Shikshini. our way into a vacant yeah. home. <laughs> <laughs> the door was open. So, so we walked in. <laughs> Come on in. Um, what, was, what was really cool about that video is it was... For some reason, this band has a tendency to shoot in like single degree, single digit degree weather. For some reason, almost all of our music videos we shot in ice cold weather. So that one was freezing. Oh. Everybody was frozen. Sarah's in this giant jacket and her hands are like trembling. Mm -hmm. And um, we did it in, I think, two and a half hours. Mm -hmm. We we were like we sped through that. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Shout yeah, out, everybody. shout out Brady Sutliff. For... Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Actually, yeah, <laughs> was... Brady. I was going to ask you, is that where you found Brady? Brady? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 We found him just sitting in the house by himself. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I absolutely love Brady to death. And I just made his uh, most recent record. And uh, um, this is totally side note. But anyways, yeah. yeah so um, Brady, as um, he was here making his record, uh, I told him, I was like, do we got to get a place to shoot? this music video called vacant home. Mm -hmm. So, and he's like, Oh, you know, I live out in, um, you know, the sticks where nobody's at. He's like, there's a lot of abandoned places out there. And I was like, dude, if you can get us into one, that would be amazing. And what was, there's some weird serendipity going on with this whole thing because months before this, which is the album cover. So the out, or I'm sorry, not the album, but the single cover, single, what you yep. would find online right now is a picture of the house that we shot in right for the music video. Mm -hmm. Derek went months before that for his job, had to pass this house. Years. Oh, I'm sorry. Years. It was years. <laughs> it was like two years ago, and um, uh, I I deliver cars to – sometimes get to deliver cars to houses, and um, it was around Shikshini Lake, and uh, I, I would always pass – you. if you go to Shikshini Lake, you, you have to pass that house. Yeah. And I was just in love with the look of it, and um, – I'm, I said to myself, like, I would love to go inside that building and like explore. And, um, 
and yeah, it's so, insane so we in up, hindsight that we got to. So Derek was like, "Hey, I want to get I want to get a picture for the single art, and I want to go to this house." Again, years later. Mm -hmm. So we were like, okay, cool. So me, Sarah, and Derek took a ride, went out there, got a picture of the house. It was cool. And um, and then I was and then this is and now after I was speaking with Brady, and um, so we already had our picture for the single. And I was like, uh, yeah, Brady, I gotta get out. So like somewhere there's gotta be an empty house. And we actually had three in mind. And I was like, well, there's the one we took the picture of. Um, and then there's like two others that maybe we can get in. And he goes, well, I probably can't get you in to, you know, the first two, but maybe the, the third one. And I was like, okay, cool. Um, so from some weird miscommunication, mm -hmm. um, I thought we were going to house C, right? There's a B and C. I thought we were going to house C, but house a was the one we took a picture of. And you need to pass house A to get to C. So this whole time, I'm like, okay, we're going to house C. Andrew's already there yeah. at this other house. Yeah. And I, I pass. You like that. I don't know how I feel about this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I pass house A and Brady's sitting outside of it. And I was like, what the heck? So I, I pulled back and I was like, what are you doing? I was like, you know, we're at the other house. And he's like, no, dude, I was talking about this house. I was like, the one we got a picture of? No. <laughs> so, so we wild. literally end up shooting in the house. Like, I, I called Andrew and I was like, hey, you're at the wrong place. We're actually at the one we took a photo of. And thank the Lord for that. There were like, there were like sheets hanging from these windows. And I call Eric and I'm like, I'm pretty sure someone's living in this house. <laughs> and, we're about to, and we're about to storm in. <laughs> yeah, so so Brady, you know, gets us in this, this other place. Um even though we all thought we were going somewhere else and I happened to pass him on the way there. So that was like really crazy and really weird. But yeah, so the house in the picture is the one that we shot at. And it's everything you would hope for to look like inside for a music video because we go up this spiral, like it was like concrete spiral staircase. Yeah, the house was built. Well, when was no, it? Was it, concrete, it was wooden. like, Oh, was it wooden? Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Design. Yeah. Looked, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Tiny house. So, I, w I will tell the story. Please. Andrew is shooting in his room, right? Everybody got a room. Andrew's shooting in his room. Mm -hmm. All on the floor is covered in letters and books. Mm -hmm. Just like nasty. I mean, like, it's covered in, like, animal feces and, like, it's yeah. pretty gross. There's just so much poop. So much, <laughs> so much poop. <laughs> um, yeah. 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 So, <laughs> Andrew is or Derek is shooting his parts with Sarah and Andrew's just like kicking around all the books right he's just kind of shuffling through and just like looking at things Andrew found a letter unopened unopened letter in this house mm -hmm. postmarked 1942 yep no way it was nuts yes so we had to open it. <laughs> I had to commit a felony and like <laughs> yeah. I opened mail from the 40s <laughs> yeah 1942 but either, it was it was like it was like a letter written to someone it was like the modern day text message yeah. of the 40s and I was like right. this is wild like yeah it was like then we kind of it was like it said hi Susan just like Lizzie. checking on yes yeah, so, this is Lizzie oh it's like hey Lizzie just following up from last week hope yeah. you're doing well yeah, it was like yeah. Yeah. on Thursday it said like sorry we can't we didn't or we missed you or something. I know one thing was like, we needed to get back to Plymouth by nine 30. Yeah. I remember that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they're like, hope to see you at the wedding this Friday. And I was like, this is crazy. Wow. I wonder yeah. if they saw him at the wedding. Yeah. <laughs> How was it not destroyed by like the weather? Like, Dude, I don't know, man. No, I clue. found a lot. Like I took a lot of unreal. photos of all Absolutely the unreal. room. We have proof of it. I promise. We're not yeah, lying. We did. Kind of video. Video. Yeah. 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 I opened it on video. <laughs> That's wild. It's so wild. And like, for, for one, I like, you know, you see these abandoned buildings and it's sad because like there was once, you know, people living there, people working right. there, whatever. Right. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah. And it just, I don't know. It's, it's weird. It, it was, it was wild. I just remember like sifted, I sifted through probably that whole shoot. I shot my, my shots first and then I just stayed in that room just kind of sifting through the books. Yeah. yeah I, I love doing that. Like everything, it was cool. was, almost everything in that room was dated between 1920 to 1945 ish. Yeah. And I just found so like there, whoever was there must've been, they, must, they, they studied something. Cause there was just, there were so many like, like learning books. I remember I got, yeah. um, my wife works in labor and delivery. And I just remember like sending her like it was some type of gynecology book, from, yeah. like 1925. And I'm like, I don't know why this is here, but this is kind of cool. Wow. Like, <laughs> yeah, that's that's awesome. We, we were shooting a music video, but the thing is, it's like the thing that was on my mind the whole entire time is like, time's just gonna go on 
and on and yeah. things are just going to be left yeah the way it is kind of, it's, yeah. it's kind of morbid to think about but it's one of our songs on the record yeah <laughs> it is there's a song that's thematically about that <laughs> yeah well I, I don't know when it was maybe within the last year i was like uh, i came to a thought that you know one day somebody who isn't me will be living in my house right yeah right it's weird it is weird. <laughs> <laughs> hey i i live in my grandparents house so yeah. my grandfather who died before i was even born mm -hmm. built this place and um you know the house you were in when we took you know took the photo yeah and uh it's like my mom grew up there yeah like it's so you know it's so weird to think and now like i'm raising my son in the house that like my mom grew up in like i don't know it's kind of cool it's cool to like keep it within the family and at first i was like i thought it was going to be weird because after my grandparents died my family was like well you know there's no mortgage on the house. Like, why don't you and Sarah just move in? Yeah. Um, and I was like, yeah, let's, you know, we're keeping the house in the family. Mm -hmm. um, but at first I was like, is this going to be weird? Like I have childhood memories of going to my grandparents' house, literally this house mm -hmm. for Christmas and like opening up presents and stuff. And, yeah. I, and it's not, it ended, you know, it ended up like, it was like a weird psychological. Yeah, like it, it, it feels like two different houses. It doesn't feel like the same thing. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it's just like, I don't know. It's just kind of awesome to think, you know, like our master bedroom was my mom's room mm -hmm. growing up. Interesting. Wow. Yeah. Weird, right? <laughs> that, is, that's, that is wild. I always wanted like, um, my grandmother passed away. Um, a neighbor that I used to have actually bought it uh, mm -hmm. from my family. So they lived there with their kids for a few years. Um, so when it was up for sale, I was able to go into it just to kind of like, just see it and how like they had yeah. uh, changed things. Um, but yeah, I'd always love to like go, you know, knock on those doors again. And like my grand, my other grandparents used to live in like an apartment in West Wyoming, mm -hmm. um, that like as a kid seemed so large, Yeah. Right? like now looking at it as an adult, like thinking back on it like the kitchen was so small the bathroom was so small um and then i i i've driven past it since and like you look at it driving it's like wow this place is quite small like right yeah. but back right. then it was like so right. big right it's weird like yeah. i feel like in instances and circumstances like that it's i feel like i'm i'm trying to seek out like those those feelings that i got like that like from my youth yeah yeah and and <laughs> the uh Elliot's room, I stayed in a lot mm -hmm. when, uh, and my sister, my sister and I would like stay in there, like in this bed. And my grandfather would always say, if you, uh, if you stay over on a Saturday night and you go to church with us in the morning, then I'll take you to Dairy Queen afterwards. Ah, so it's nice. like, okay. So, you know, we go hang out with grandma, oh, Dairy grandpa, Queen. and then, yeah, and then we go to church and then get ice cream. Right. And like, I just have like so many memories of what that room used to look like. And that's literally Elliot's room. And it had like, nasty 70s like uh the wood wall paneling yeah but like not real wood like that cheap like nasty veneer or whatever yeah. and uh it's just like so many vivid memories and that room felt huge yeah. that room felt huge and now i go in there i was like this room is so tiny <laughs> <laughs> i think yeah. it's it's like kind of like shifting it a little bit back toward you know like uh, the band and music and everything like that relating the two concepts i that sometimes plays in my brain of like the the arts in general and and why why i create period sometimes the, the 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 idea in my brain kind of says like if you create something there's there's a chance that it's going to last well beyond you oh yeah like 100 yeah. percent. So that, that runs through my mind sometimes 100 percent. like yeah. <laughs> I, I imagine that. and then that's why i love doing this because like my my dad passed away when i was 22 Mm -hmm. um and what i would give to like just have like a voicemail that i could just oh yeah you know right. reference because i i, I forget what he sounded like it's been almost yeah. 20 years now yeah um but like you know as you said you're creating your creative music will live well past you and like i'm doing this like my kids will have be able to reference this as long as the internet doesn't crash exactly um, <laughs> like yeah. you know it's gonna be like I, what i would give to be able to to have that and i was even just thinking when we we're talking like you know, my, I had my grandparents, I think I was 20, it's like 21 or 22 when my, my last grandparent died, but mm -hmm. I didn't, I didn't like really appreciate 
them for what they were because like I was a kid, like you don't really think about that kind of stuff. Like exactly. they're just these adult figures that, you know, they take care of you. They mm-hmm. spend time with you. But like as an adult now, I would love to be able to talk to them about yeah. what did you do for a living? What did you, what, like, how did right. you guys? Right. Like, yeah, exactly. It's like, I think about that all the time. Yeah. Yeah. That realization of like you, during your youth, you tend to forget that they're also progressing in life as well, regardless of age, you know, oh, yeah. like when you're 60, you're still, what does 70 look like? Yeah. What does 80, you, like when you're, when you're seven, you don't think about that. No. <laughs> right. And it's until you reach a certain milestone that you're just like, Oh wait, everybody equals. Talks, yeah, yeah. Everybody <laughs> talks about my grandfather on my dad's side. Well, I mean, both of my grandfathers, um, uh, so highly, but specifically the one on my, uh, on my dad's side was, 40 i think mm. when he had my dad who is the baby of the family yeah. and then i'm the baby of my family so by the time i was even born my grandfather was like 74 right. or something or like 75 so like i barely knew mm. him and yeah. i was like dang i wish i could like talk to him like as a as an adult yeah. not as just like sitting on grandpa's lap you know like mm. playing his trumpet or whatever right. you know like i wish i wish so bad i could have like an adult like real conversation but like that was yeah. a big factor why we had Elliot because I was thinking of my parents and yeah. I was like, dang, I want I want Elliot to have a relationship with my parents. Right. right. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. Anyways, yeah, yeah that's no. <laughs> well, no, my, my grandfather fought in World War II, and like mm-hmm. what I would give to be able to, like, to, to just conversate with yeah, him, yeah. Like, 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 what was what was like that like? Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> right. Uh, let's do yeah. a podcast and let's record it. Like, <laughs> like can you imagine? Yeah, <laughs> there's got to be some type of AI future technology that's going to make that happen. <laughs> well, actually, actually <laughs> you know, from from our perspective, I mean, you know, you just mentioned with your kids that they'll be able to reference these, but, but that's like a two way street. Like, mm-hmm. you know, when I'm dead, mm-hmm. Elliot's going to be able to watch stuff like this yes like watch interviews and see like how i thought and yeah. and so on and so forth and elliot's kids hopefully you know who right. knows what happens so just are going to be able to be like what the heck was grandpa like exactly <laughs> like oh he was a weirdo <laughs> yeah <laughs> you know yeah that's it's so it's so cool like it's it's cool to have this and that's one reason I, I started it too well i wanted to do it just like with friends because i i have a like, really great memory and yeah. i'm worried that that'll be the first thing that goes so I wanted to have like just audio documentation of my friends and talking and reminiscing. Um, and it just kind of morphed into like, you know, yeah. entertainment related, but like, it's know, kind of I a always... beautiful thing because you could look back on it and just, I don't yeah. know. I, there's still like, given your, given your predicament and your circumstance, you like, you could look back on this, you know, in like 20, 30 years. And just this is like, since you, did such an overwhelming number of podcast episodes. You just have so much material to reminisce on. Like, yeah. <laughs> that's yeah. awesome. Like, I can't wait. Yeah, I'll, I'll be yelling to my wife, get the tapes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know? Get get my tapes. <laughs> I want to remember so much hope buried. Yes. <laughs> Give my apple glasses. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I can't even imagine what's going to be like in 20 years. I mean, think about what's happened in the past 20 exponential i know right way too many things (laughs) i don't even want to know this whole like reading people's minds and shit no thanks (laughs) no thanks the chips the chips they're they're, where they read everything that whole theory i'm I'm, I'm tapping out i don't want to do that i don't know about the chips soon because right now at motor world there's um wow i'm I'm promoting them right now. No, <laughs> shout out. Right now, right now at, at um, car dealerships, the uh, the chips are being uh, affected with the key fobs, so they don't have enough chips to inject us with. Oh, right, fair, fair, fair. So yeah. we're we're okay for a while, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Good to know. All right. There's a shortage. Right, we're good. Right. That's still a kind of shortage. I don't <laughs> want I don't want my wife to know anything. I think like she'll be like, I, I marrying this guy. Like, this guy is only thinking about food all the time. <laughs> <laughs> like, this, this is the father of my children. We need to get out of here. Dude, it's, just, it's just dead yeah. silent. It's just dead silent. She goes, "Really? You just had dinner? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you think about tacos? <laughs> or maybe it'll be funny. Like, is it? You know, we're such different creatures, right? Mm-hmm. And we're very simple. I think as men, you know, we, you know." Right, food, 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 simple basics yeah, of life. And we're, we're, our, our, you guys know, as as, as uh, husbands and fathers, like our the wife's brain, they they don't stop. They think about everything. Thankfully, because 
mm-hmm. if we were, you know, the vacations we go on, I remember ha- being halfway to the destination, being like, oh, did we get the toothbrush? Yep, got I'm it. I'm right there with you. I am uh, right there swimsuit? with you. Yep, yeah, got it. Uh, safety vest? Yeah, got it. I'm like, Thank God for you because I'm 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 great on the <laughs> short term. Like if we have to like do something like quick or like I I I make a checklist, we're good to go. But if, if it's like a, if it's like of any substantialness, like any any big trip at all, like I I don't know why I just lose it yeah. and like I like I just like Abby take over. <laughs> Thank God oh, for that. That's great. Yeah. But back to back to the band. Yeah. Um, First full length out due out on this, uh, May seventeenth, and we have May a release 17th. show, seventeenth, mm. right? Uh, uh, release then, show twenty fifth. We're letting it stew for a week. Yeah, at the Jazz Cafe. In the jazz. Oh yeah, yep. Do we have some uh, great, great uh, guests joining you. Do you want to talk about that? Yeah, Absolutely. Totally. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, local legend James Barrett, who yes, we've sir. also had on the podcast, is going to be playing, which is awesome. So we're really excited about that. Yes. Um, uh, we wanted to do bands that weren't necessarily just like, um, like the same genre, but just people that we're like good friends with. Right. You know, we we wanted it to be a, a big old homie homie hangout. Homie hangout. So, yeah. You know, obviously, you know, uh, we all know Barrett, of course. Everybody does. He's iconic <laughs> here. Um, but then uh, for the better is playing, and. Oh my gosh, they were also on the podcast. Jeez. Um, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. So uh, Jake uh has become a friend of mine and uh and obviously you know Craig and Mike of and Chris. Mm-hmm. Um but man, we we just like we hit it off so well. And uh I remember Jake reached out to you, I think. Okay for the podcast. So the, initially for the podcast our podcast. Yeah, 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 for our podcast. And then man, from there they just they came over. We shot it, and we were like, "Yo, these guys are sick." Yeah. So we ended up just becoming like good friends with them. Mm-hmm. Talk to them all the time, um, and uh, so we were like, "Yeah, for the better." Now they're from uh, a little bit of all over the place, mm-hmm. um, but uh, oh my gosh, where's Jake from? I don't even know. Is it North State I want, Farm? I want to say. <laughs> <laughs> I can't remember. I can't remember. I want, I want to say North. I, 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 I don't know. I don't track him. But like, I, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Shut like, I know Apple Jake. Tom Ron. Yeah, I know Chris is from like the Allentown area, so like I know they're like kind of all over the place. And I know Mike moved here from Rhode Island, so like mm-hmm. you know they were all over. But so of oh, course, you know, I was got them you, playing. I have to, I have to tangent off real sure. quick, just because. Um, so uh, for the better has uh, like a little bit of a side project. What's the name of the country project? I don't know. Oh, it's a country duo. It's a country du- it's duo. Jake and, Craig, right? Jake and Craig do a country duo. And I, I looked at Gabby the other day. I'm like, I don't know. I'm just this. I'm like that that single hurricane. I'm like, I'm their biggest fan. And they don't even realize it. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Funny. Um, and then Wither Away, which um, we actually got a chance to play with them and Gavin's other band. So Gavin's other band is Escape Artist uh, from Milton. We got asked to play in Milton with Escape Artist and Wither Away and us. Mm-hmm. And um, that show, I don't even remember when it was. That mm-hmm. show wow, yeah. was the last show that our old bass player, Nick, was playing. Yes. Yeah. So he, um, uh, it was uh, it was not like a, it wasn't a bad send off or anything. Like, <laughs> like he, you know, he decided he wanted to, he needed to focus on certain other things. So we were like, absolutely, you know, like do what you got to do. Go kill it, homie. Mm-hmm. Love yeah. you. See you later. Um. But yeah, so that was his last show. And then the guitar player of Wither Away, also named Nick. Very confusing. Mm-hmm. Um, My Nick step loader. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So much help. Heard that our <laughs> Nick was quitting. It was like, hey, you need a bass player? And I was like, well, that's funny. So that kind of sparked our conversation with me and Nick from Wither Away. Mm-hmm. So then we started chatting and Wither Away is sick. They're yeah. just like a really Super good sick. band. And again, they're from all over the place too. Like one of the More guys, like the Redding area. One of them I'm pretty sure is from Redding. I think, I think JJ, I'm not really a hundred percent sure. I know Nick is from Delaware, like North Northern Delaware. Yeah. So like it's they're all over the place. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we just think like every band that's playing is so solid and it, yeah. it kind of sucks because we could have picked so many bands mm-hmm. that mm-hmm. are friends with us that are, you know, amazing bands who are great people. Um, you know, we could have made an entire day festival of how many bands are like friends of ours and so on and True. so forth. Yeah. Um, 
but you know, at, at the end of the day, for the better and wither away, um, they do fit musically really close to us. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. I remember so that's, Derek, that's kind of a factor. Yeah. Derek, you, you were ranting to me about James. Um, I, yeah. I kind of dabble all over the place. I, you know, it's like, um, I do some songwriting and play uh, guitar and help out in the band Altered Pink. And I remember you showed up because Altered Pink opened for one of James's shows at the V spot. Yeah. And I remember Derek just conversating with me afterwards. And I'm like, I know this, this dude connects on us with, I uh, like, I uh, like an emotional level and <laughs> like, I'm super into it. I've seen James Barrett play many times and I've been, you know, we've, I've known him for a long time through, I think kiss theater and also the Marine Corps league. Yeah. Um, but, uh, but when, when, when I was standing there in the V spot and watching them play and it just like his music is extremely emotional and uh, very powerful, and and has that kind of rock vibe, yeah. but also that ambient melodic vibe. Right. So I just looked at Andrew, and I was like, "That's he the needs, one. He, this needs to. <laughs> he needs to play our release show. It fits. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it does. Yeah, yeah. James is one of my favorite artists uh, locally here. Um, yeah, I can't uh, speak highly enough about him. I don't know what it is. I remember when I had a radio show. I he was one of the first artists I played like in 2017. Mm-hmm. Um, and I didn't even know who he was at that point. I just his song came my way, and I played it, and he's just gotten exponentially better over the years. Yeah. Yes, yeah, it's awesome. awesome. It's just awesome to see him grow in the area. So it's really cool. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think Derek touched on something that we didn't that we didn't touch but touch on before. You mentioned the Marine Corps League, so I want to I want to yeah. give like an origin story for me and Derek and how far we actually go back. Um, so prior to, I don't know if it's called that anymore though. I don't even think it's even, I don't, I don't know. So me and Derek have known each other since I want to say the 10th or 11th grade of high school. Um, so I was just starting to play in bands at the time. Um, this is pre send request days. Um, so I went to, I went to like, it was like a, it was like a talent show. It wasn't even like a battle. The, it was like a talent show at the kiss theater in wilkes Bear. Uh, keep in mind, I'm like 15 at the time. Um, so like I show up to support my friend's band. I think they played like, they, pl- they played like Strokes covers or something like that. <laughs> and like, here I am just like the fanboy guy support the bros. Um, but out walks this insanely talented band of brothers and friends that, uh, that just so happened to be Derek and his two brothers and the hybrid session friends. They were, they're called hybrid sessions and just completely blew everyone out of the water. And I just remembered, like, I was like, I was kind of upset. Cause I'm like, my, my bro didn't win, but, <laughs> <laughs> but, um, I got introduced to Derek that way. And so I started, a, I started a cover band not long after that experience, like seeing him for the first time. And, um, we just, I didn't we, even know you were there. Yeah, that's really cool. Yeah. That's really cool. And uh, we so played cool. like Green Day covers and stuff like that. And I was just trying to get gigs at like 16. I was like, I got soccer practice and then I'm going to go to brand, band practice. That was like my forte. Um, but I was trying to get gigs anywhere I could. And so I ended up stumbling upon uh, this like the, this Marine Corps League. It's it was like, like a, the kind of VFW hall kind of thing. Yeah. That was hybrid this- session... What was that? Was that is that like in the Wilkes Bear area, like across? Yeah, from it's in it's in Plain or Miners Mills. Miners yes. Mills. Yes, yes, that. Yes, it's I got introduced lo- to some dude named Jack. Um, it's like across from like Penley Footwear, right? Yes. Oh, I know exactly where that is. Yes, right yeah, across the street. I, I used to shoot darts there. That's amazing. Wow. <laughs> wow, dude. Yeah, we used to have shows in the back, and, and I, that's where I, I was my first show. Yeah, and so like I remember hybrid sessions would play there all the time. And I was like, we got to get in on this. So um, I, my earliest recollections of playing shows was playing shows with hybrid sessions. Like, <laughs> and it's funny because like ever since I just kept running into Derek because like I started send requests, he would be in other bands and it would, it, there was just like everywhere I'd go, I just saw Derek. <laughs> <laughs> it's not That's a awesome. bad thing, you know? Right. That's <laughs> awesome. And then, you know, what was it like? Not when was that? It was 15, 16. So I want to say what a That's solid crazy. 12, 13 years later, we're finally in a band together. <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah. yeah. Small world. <laughs> the small area, I think. I think this it is, is. Like a, a yeah. unique. Is it unique? Or is there a ton of places across the U.S. that are like this? I don't know. I don't know. I think, I think they'll make it unique. 
Yeah, I think I think you the know? people are. Yeah, yeah, I agree with that. Yeah, I think that that's actually something that really struck me when I used to tour a lot uh, in Tala mm-hmm. was I went so many different places and I always felt like this is all the same. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was like, this is literally all the same. Mm-hmm. And the only thing that really makes anywhere different for me is having my friends and family around. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I remember going down to Texas for the first time. I was so stoked. I was like, oh my gosh, I'm going to Texas. I was like, this is going to be so sick. Mm-hmm. Like everything's going to be crazy different. And I got off the plane and I went around and I was like, there's a Walgreens. <laughs> there's a CVS. I was like, and and they're all like next to each other. I was like, there's a Best Buy. There's a Staples. There's a Dick's. Yeah. There's a Bed Bath <laughs> Beyond or whatever, you know, like, and I was like, oh my gosh, these are all, mm-hmm. it's literally the same thing. Mm-hmm. So yeah. I remember just like, you know, and obviously the fast food chains are are everywhere too. And then right. I was like, okay, well, whatever. And I we went to literally every major city in Texas. And I was like, there's a Walgreens, there's a CVS, <laughs> there's a Dick's, there's a Best Buy. At I was like, man, the illusion yeah. is over. Yeah, I was like, this is literally the same thing, except there's no trees and I'm really hot. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, this, like, I said, it's cool, but I, it really solidified the fact that like, I want to tour. I love playing shows so much, but this is always my home base. You know, like I've got my family here and that's what's more important than literally anything. That's why my studio's here. That's why like I, I want to live here yeah. because it's all the same. You can go all the way across country and you're going to find the same stuff. Yeah. yeah. So like well, at the end of the day, like you said, like the community, the pe- the people make the community. So, yeah. And I mean, and yeah. And like, when you don't know anybly it's a, exactly. <laughs> then, it, you know, then it really feels the same. But when you come home and you're just like, I know so many people. Like right. I go to my grocery you store. Pull, you and cultivate the guy, your own community. You know, the guy who checks me out is actually somebody who, you know, I, I don't even know his name, but we almost have a relationship because, <laughs> because I almost always go to his lane. You know, I, it's like I that's, to, that's the thing that makes here unique to me. I went to a restaurant and uh, there's this there's this uh, bus boy and I'm looking at him I'm like I know this guy I don't know how I know him so I'm asking the server like who what's his name and I never I, I don't know his name um, when she told me but he came came over to me and he gives me like a fist bump and he's like how you doing man I'm like good how do I know you and he's like Rudder Ave Turkey Hill <laughs> and I'm like no way <laughs> such a cool guy <laughs> Joe <laughs> his name's Joe <laughs> well Eric I think that's what we talked about when I was uh, at your place I don't know if it was during the podcast or prior to it or after you know one of the several hours we spent together exactly um, but yeah you have your recording studio um, yeah you know, and your kind of thing was like you know why not here like why not why can't people come oh yeah you know here yeah and, yeah i mean especially with the internet i mean exactly. i get tracks sent mm-hmm. to me i can mix literally anybody mm-hmm. if somebody yeah. decides that from japan mm-hmm. they want to send me tracks if there really is i could do it yeah you there know really so is like, something to like if you build it they will come <laughs> so, i you know it was just so much more important to me to stick around my family yeah you know like i married with a kid I want to be around Sarah's family. I want to be around my family. I want my son to be around, you know, my family and Sarah's family. And, you know, it's just like that stuff is way too important to me than than me being like, oh, maybe I'll get a boost in my career if I move to Nashville. Right. You know, or or wherever else, New York, Los yeah. Angeles, whatever. You know, like it's just sacrificing the time that I have on this planet to not be with the ones that I love is not worth it. Yeah. It's not like right. I'm, I'm doing it now. I'm surviving, you know, like, and I have time to spend with the people in my life that are important. Right. And it's just, you know, I, this will always yeah. just be home. Like, so if we, if we tour Japan with, with, uh, you know, fall of tears and Mochinaga fill, <laughs> yeah. does his part on stage, that's going to be great. I'm never going to move there. <laughs> like, yeah, no, exactly. Yeah, and I think know? there's, uh, you know, there's testament to, translating that message to like to the band itself oh yeah and like there's there's no beating yeah you know well there's no beating around the bush that like we're getting older like i started playing in bands and i'm six when i was like 16 17 i'll be 30 this year yeah (laughs) so like you know there's there's man welcome to the club right (laughs) so so like yeah there's there's truth to like you you hang around what you what you truly care about 
Yeah. And, uh, you know, and like I talked about the growth and, and the naturalness within the confines of this band. Um, but man, there is, there is something about, about being in this band that just, it just busts out the seams of, of respect, admiration, and, and love for one another. Yeah. That like, it's just, you, you can't replicate it. We found it so, yeah. you know, we all had our trials and errors in, in, in various other things, but man, I think, I think we found it here and uh, yes, there's, yeah, everyone's here for the long term and like, you know, relating to what you said, like this is, yes, well, yes, Wilkes-Barre Scranton is, is home, but like in, in a weird metaphorical way, like so much hope is becoming artsy home. Yeah, yeah, no, <laughs> yeah, no, honestly, yeah, yeah. And I think that's why like, that's why Gavin's in this band because, yeah. you know, Gavin is the newest member unofficially yeah but um <laughs> yeah we're not saying anything but he's he's in this band now mm. but uh <laughs> you know the decision to bring gavin in was one not taken lightly mm. and you know it it too it was not decided on quickly right because yeah, sure. like it needed to be it's the you. right person you know who feels like family mm. to us right you know yeah so yeah, there's a lot of a lot of, really lot of weight in that one, I guess. <laughs> it's, it's really sweet. Glad to be here. Kind of deep there. Yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> that makes sense. <laughs> well, I saw that you were also uh, today. So real quick, today is March twelfth, uh, I believe it is. We're recording. Yes, sir. Uh, this yeah. probably won't be released until early April, believe it or not. Cool. Oh, all right. All okay. good. Yeah, yeah. No, that's cool. a little backed up, but everything is still going to be, uh, you know, current. Uh, we of haven't course. talked about yeah, yeah. anything. Any yes. timely events outside of you know your album release May seventeenth uh, and right. the release show May. Depending on when this is out, we might have the next single out. Okay. <laughs> yeah. There is a date, but I guess we're not going to say it. Right. So we'll see. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It'd be in, or you can speak, you can yeah. I saw it. You were as part of this little, you know, you're doing this, you know, outreach media stuff. Like you're really pushing this new song, and and yeah. obviously yeah. the release coming up. Uh, you were on uh, WSFX. WSFX. That was, day. That was this, morning. this morning. Literally this morning. Ron Reno. I'll, I'll kind of yeah, riff. Shout out Ron Reno. Yeah, I'll riff on that a little bit. Um, I have been in like, so by, I have a, a little bit of a background. Um, my bachelor's is in PR. Um, so I've, and I've been around the music scene long enough to start understanding how this all works. Uh, so for this release, uh, like, very graciously, I was I was asked. Um, well, I I I asked initially if I can like. Do you guys care if I do the PR, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And so I, I they everyone graciously accepts. So I have very advantageously taken on that new role because like I haven't done it within the kind within the confines of the band solely by myself for a while. So that's that's the reason why we're doing this podcast right now. That's the reason why we're on WSFX this morning and. I'm just really, I'm really going for it and trying to really get us out there. But yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, another crazy thing. Um, so that literally this morning we're spending time with Ron mm -hmm. and um, I called my dad up and I was like, Hey, we, you know, we just left LCC. We did our, um, our, our interview thing. And uh, just, you know, I always tell my dad like how everything goes and um I was like, yeah, you know, I, I just, you know, I met Ron, Ron Reno and, and so on and so forth through Andrew. And my dad apparently has been friends with Ron for like 40 years. <laughs> and he's like, yeah, I know him super well. And I was like, what? <laughs> he's like, yeah, yeah. He's like him and another guy um, were like really good friends, like growing up. And I was like, are you kidding me? So what's funny is that I didn't put this together. I mean, I didn't know that my dad knew him, but Ron asked me if I had a brother and just because I'm sure he was thinking like this guy kind of looks familiar. Maybe I know of somebody mm -hmm. and um, I think it was, I, I was like, like right after the last name, it was like Novrosky. And he yeah, was he's like, like, you have a brother, you got a brother. Yeah. And I was like, no, <laughs> no. And that's literally when it ended. I was just like, no. Nope. And, um, and okay. then I texted him, I texted him and I was like, Hey, I think, you know, my dad. And he just texted me back. I'm an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> so well, it's like, this is so funny. Well, it's funny because I used to, I used to work with Ron at Rock 107. Yeah. Um, Actually, you know what? Is Ron still there? Yeah. So okay. I went back to Rock 107 just recently. Yeah, I I was 
connecting the dots earlier today because we made a post being at WSFX and someone commented from Rock 107. And then Eric was like, yo, and someone just got like haunt, like commented from Rock 107. And I was like, oh yeah, Ron like worked there or works there. I don't know. And then I just started connecting the dots with you as well. So <laughs> it's everything well, went full circle today. It was very, very unique. So I just this past Saturday... I filled in on Rock 107 for Ron nice. Reno. Oh, wow. Well, oh, this <laughs> wow. Like, this is weird. <laughs> Working out. First ever air shift on Rock 107. Oh, there you go. Congratulations. Wow. How was that? It was, I think it was good. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I joked it my, my first and last time, but the uh, the CEO texted me out, you know, during the, the shift and said, uh, that uh, he thought I sounded great and happy that I'm part of the team. And I'm like, okay, well, I guess uh, I'll be back. But uh, <laughs> yeah, that's I awesome. Nice. Well, it's also funny. I, I, I made a joke to my friends and my wife. I, I said, um, I'm really happy that I have a hot wife and an amazing life because <laughs> it would be some, it would be a cruel joke to be on there, like a, a like an active like radio station that, you know, a yeah. very popular station course, now. Yeah. When you know radio is you know, competing, obviously with the streaming services, is things like that. So and it's not as popular as it was, you know, let's say twenty years ago. Right. You know, when I was a whole different world then. When I was yeah. you know single. If I was on the radio and I was you know you know twenty years ago and I was single, I, I could be a different person. Mm -hmm. You know. <laughs> so it's just funny. <laughs> but I'm glad Ron Reno was out on vacation because it gave me an opportunity to. Jump on Rock 107. Well, there you go. Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> wow. Yeah, so that was awesome. That was great today. Good conversation. Yeah, absolutely. What's awesome What's chat, next? Chat what, do you, what else you got lined up? Um, the View. The View. Uh, <laughs> Oprah. Yeah, 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 sitting yeah, there Oprah, with yeah. Oprah. Yep, and clearly. Yep. Helen after that. <laughs> oh, my God. I don't... <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah. There, I didn't yeah. Know, uh, yeah, yeah. Actually, you have to go on alone. We're not going to be there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah so mm, that's just... they're going to love me. <laughs> going to be able to tell who's who. Me and yeah, Gavin. No, I, uh, so <laughs> I guess I don't know if we're officially announcing any dates yet. So I'll be kind of vague. Right. Uh, there will be a second single coming out at some point. Fair, fairly, fairly soon. Fairly soon. It could be yeah, out right well, now. Like I said, we'll be vague. Um, before the album release, uh, and then there's the album release. Mm. Um, and, um, uh, yeah, we're just going to be like doing as much of this as we can. We're going to, you know, we're promoting the heck out of vacant home right now, especially yep. cause like we're, we're so proud of, of this album yeah, and like everything, you know, that, that, ha that it's come to be. Mm -hmm. Um, and yeah, we just want, we, you know, we want to share it with everybody. We want everybody to enjoy it, you know, as much as we enjoyed making it and, and so on and so forth. And, uh, exactly. yeah. So then. We're we just... we have a couple shows around like Philly mm -hmm. is coming up and then uh Easton, just like places like far from home, because you know, we're trying to keep uh trying to keep like May 25th, you know, like May yeah, 25th. May 25th is, is the, is the, is big, the big one. We're up. trying to like yeah. we're trying to get everyone and everything possible to happen yeah. at that show. So yeah, yeah. Come out to the jazz cafe. Come jazz May cafe 25th. May 25th. Yeah. Gonna be a blast. Oh, yeah. The bands are absolutely incredible, so you don't have to sit through any uh <laughs> any <laughs> bands that aren't good. Um yeah, and it's uh it's it's gonna be it's gonna be wonderful. So yeah, that's like the big thing. Yeah. And how yeah, did you how did you uh get into the jazz cafe? And I only asked that question because I mean within the last yeah. couple of years they have kind of diversified their genre yeah. of music. Um yeah. but the jazz cafe, you know, history. Uh, they've been jam bands and, and things of that nature. So again, I've always loved talking about the Jazz Cafe because again, they, they've talked about or they've added new bands. Yeah. Um, how'd you guys get involved? Um, it was very difficult. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I reached out to uh, well, a, a friend of ours. His name is Anthony Picatagio. If you know who that is. Oh yeah. Um, Anthony played there with Tori B. Mm -hmm. Um. And they're solid. And so uh, I, you know, I, Sarah did a video for Tori and she's great. So, you know, we have good rapport with them. So I started talking to Anthony and I said, Hey, you're playing the jazz cafe. I want to play the jazz cafe for our release show. What should I do? And he goes, you should reach out to Heather. And, um, I don't know Heather at all. I don't know her personally. And I don't even know what she looks like. Um, 
but I reached out to an email and I didn't get a response. And then I, re- I followed up again and they didn't get a response. <laughs> and then, um, I reached out on the, on the website, the jazz cafe, like actual website. And I got a response, um, from, uh, oh my gosh. Mm. I can't believe I'm blanking on his name. That's Who, owns it? No. No. Who owns it? Uh, Friedman. Friedman. Oh my mm. gosh. Yeah. How can I, yeah. Yeah. Rob Friedman. I got a, <laughs> I got a response from Rob and then from there I ended up reaching out to the Kirby lobby to see what that would look like to have our release show there, which that's AJ. Yep. And then AJ gets me in contact with Heather and Ben. Yeah. And- AJ came in clutch. So oh, yeah, 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 yeah. He helped AJ, a ton AJ, in, in all save, of this. Save our butts on this. Mm-hmm. But anyways, it was, it was definitely long and a little confusing. And now I'm in a group chat with AJ, Heather, and Ben, but I don't have Heather and Ben's number, so I don't know which one's which. <laughs> <laughs> but right. I keep updating them, and I'm just like, "Hey, here's the flyer." And uh, but yeah, so like everything's announced, and like yeah. we're all good now. But <laughs> remember, we had, there was like, yeah, there was a really bumpy road. At one point, we were like almost double booking over the Badleys. Yeah. And we were like, uh oh. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I was like, I don't know what the heck is going on. So, so in, in a very long story, uh, you know, long story short, we ended up figuring it out. So May 25th is yes. is the date. Locked and, in. And we're um uh un, again unofficially announced. Uh we are trying to book like a little weekend or around it. So like the yeah. Friday before and the Sunday after, but it's actually it's gonna be far enough where um you probably won't want to drive as far as it's going to be, you know, like right. we're, we're going down a little South for the 24th mm-hmm. coming up to home on the 25th for mm-hmm. the jazz cafe and then going Go up North, north yeah. for, uh, for the 26th. So we're trying to make it like, you know, a little weekend or base around like the release. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. yeah. So we, we got plans, man. Band <laughs> stuff. <laughs> uh, yeah. Cycle stuff. I, I <laughs> love the, uh, the direction it's heading, uh, you know, vacant home is a great song. And so it's a, it's a great, uh, Thank you. Intro to the the new, thank you very much, the new yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> We're very stoked. About yeah, thank you. It. Seriously. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But it's full, have, the record is full of twists and turns. So yeah, there's, there's <laughs> a lot of cool stuff coming. A lot of cool stuff. <laughs> <laughs> May 17th. May yeah. 17th. Yep, record is out May 17th, and that's gonna drop with the music video. Um which has our other member in it. <laughs> Ooh. Yeah. I don't know. So, uh, we'll find out. <laughs> I, don't know. I don't know. Details. I mean, so we'll just blur them out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I have, I have two questions and we'll wrap things up. Yeah, yeah. please. Okay. Um, I don't know who wants to take, uh, I, I want to ask like one, two, I guess, I guess since uh, Eric and Andrew have been more vocal, yeah, we'll leave it to that. Oh God! Oh, oh God. yeah! Oh, oh no. yeah! Oh, what? There's a bug behind you. This is all you, no, Gavin. This is all you, yeah. Gavin. <laughs> all right, it. shoot. We'll do Andrew. This is for yes. Andrew. There's an asteroid coming to Earth, and it cannot be stopped. Okay. Mm-hmm. You have five days until it hits and ends the world. Okay. What are you doing? Five days until it hits and ends the whole thing. Yeah, it's like there's no, Will Smith isn't going to come save us. Like Bruce Willis, <laughs> not going to happen. You're that the world to him. is over. Like, <laughs> I don't know. Smith ain't saving A, but Will Smith ain't saving himself. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? If, if five days to live. What are you doing? All right, let me think here. Um, all right, so. Well, I, I, all right, so I'm, I'm very, I'm a very logical thinker here. So I have to fully. Right off the bat, my brain just goes, okay, the state of the world is going to be absolutely insane. Um, very morbidly, I'm picturing like some kind of like, what's that movie? You're the horror guy. What's the movie with like, <laughs> like, yeah, it's like, it's a certain time frame where you could just start killing people. Oh, the purge. Oh, the yeah, purge. so my brain went very purge. Like, wow. it's going to get very ugly very Jeez, fast. Geez, all like, yeah, well, yeah that's no. probably not the direction that you wanted me to go. Well, that's where I went. Did you just think everyone's <laughs> violent? And not everyone's violent. I just think there's going to be it's chaos. Gonna be chaos. It's well, going to be literally chaos. Literally everywhere, like, every every place is going, wait, wait, like, stores on. getting robbed left hold and right. What, what, if, what if, for some reason, you're the only one who knows? Yeah, I was going to say, can we Am I the only one who knows? You're the only one who knows. Sure. Let's leave it. Okay. Okay. Oh, okay. That changes wow. everything. You're going to tell everyone. 
<laughs> like, that changes don't murder, absolutely everything. I never, I never thought about that. I just assumed in my mind everyone knew. See, that's oh, like okay. so that's okay. a whole different yeah. scenario. So, like, if yeah. I'm the only one that knows, the apparently they're going to end in five days. All right. So, what are my what are my limitations? Like, do I have like it, do, does, does life stay exactly normal? I just know the world's going to end in five days. Yeah. Yeah. All right, well, now I'm going to have to get, like, super, like, sentimental and, like, kind of sappy with you. Well, I mean, <laughs> yeah, eventually one day maybe your kid listens to this, right? But, like, of course you go there, right? Family, right. wife. Of course, children, yeah. You, you know, you, you take the time. You go out your, you go out your way. You say, you say goodbye. That, well, not goodbye, but, you know, you make sure you – you you make sure that everyone in your life gets the assurance that, that you love them and they're yeah. appreciated. You do You go that route. It's like, like that's a, it's a terrifying thing to think about. I, I hope it makes it me want to cry. I don't. Yeah, I don't want to know. I mean, if something doesn't happen, I yeah, want to. I don't want to know either. And then I can't. Can like, you remember that? Like, there's so this is this. I don't know why this is in my this is in my brain right now. There's a Nickelback video that yeah. ex that exists out. There. I think it might be. All right, listen. I just it's I, I'm somewhat a big Nickelback guy. I, I think it's Nickelback I think it's. Guy. I think it's saving me. Oh, if you yeah, watch, yeah. yeah. So there's like a timer above everyone's head, and there's like one dude with the visual of who gets everyone's timer. So he like, and everyone's counting down. So he's just kind of oh, walking around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like that's how it kind of plays. I like. I would hate to be that guy. Like I would yeah. just live in constant panic all the time. <laughs> like someone's at like 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 three hundred seconds, I would just run. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Suddenly, everybody's at three hundred seconds. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, so the way the world is right now, it's like things things are crazy. I think right now, and then things oh, could possibly crazy. get worse. Um, you know, we're four years removed from a a, a pandemic, which is actually it's like four years exactly today. I think. Oh, wow. wow. When the world kind of shut down. Mm. But, um, still kind of like emotionally, like, I'm, I'm, I'm still, part of me is still stuck in like 20, 20, 21 ish. Yeah. Like, I don't know. Yeah. My but brain's like, still partially there. I get really scared. Like, like, let's just say, you know, internet goes down, mm. communication is limited, food yes. is scarce. Like, yes. I have a, I have a 20 month old, right? Right. Um, I have a six year old. I own a gun. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, but I'm not like very, um, what's the word? I'm not very violent. Like, well, I'm not violent, no, but like I'm not like, <laughs> like, like, like defensively violent. <laughs> right. But I'm also, I'm just not like, what's the, like, like, a gardener. You're more I, on. The, oh I'm not, yes. I'm not. I'm not saving my family. Is what I'm, I'm worried yes, about. You're like, more the yeah. Yes. You do the. Okay. The gardener was good. Yeah. <laughs> you're gentle. Like, I just, I get like you care. You're I get you're worried. a compassionate yeah. human being. <laughs> I'm very worried. I'm right there with you because I'm kind of in the same in the same boat. Yeah, I'm not I gonna just, fight off. Like if someone came after me and like wanted to take my food and stuff, I'd be like, okay, here you go, take it. Right. <laughs> now, <laughs> now what? Sorry, exactly. family. Your dad's a pussy. Oh, <laughs> I don't know. I don't. I. I. I don't like to think about the the those times. I yeah. hope that I never have to see those times. Yeah, same. Because I don't know. I feel like the just your emotional state and the state of the world would just kind of revert backwards pretty substantially. Yeah, I feel like it's something innate, like hum, hum, something humanely would just revert very far back for like us as human beings and we'd have to we'd have to sense something primal yeah. like to, i don't know i'd have to believe <laughs> that something instinctually would click in everyone and they would uh, instantly get defensive for that reason i don't know that's just me thinking lot with like logically yeah <laughs> I'd hope, i like to think that people would you know band together and uh you know mm -hmm. be on the same team yeah. as opposed to you know this well, that's divisiveness what, that's, we've been super philosophical so. Is, yeah. <laughs> so, it's very philosophical. I mean, isn't that what we want now? <laughs> well, yeah, but I mean, uh, that's the you know that's the big, that's the problem. Yeah, the problem. <laughs> the problem. <laughs> I didn't. I'm sorry, I didn't really have an answer for you. And all you're not supposed to. Really. I was. You, you, I didn't prep you. It's just kind of off the cuff. You know, it's just something like. Yeah. Yeah. I, I was thinking about we we used to talk about with. Uh, I don't know. You need to give me like, like a very like red red pill blue pill type of question yeah. i'll give you a solid answer then <laughs> so the other one was uh 
and Eric, you can answer this. Um, it's not really a question, I guess you could say, but like it could be. Yeah, people always say, like, I wish I could be a fly on the wall for to to see your witness, whatever. Yeah. But, but imagine having to switch bodies with somebody. Yeah. And imagine like imagine if you're just like, you know, young, young Eric, like no kids, no wife. And all, all of a sudden, like you're now like you're, you're you got switched with a, a person who has got kids, or maybe you're like a uh, an all star athlete, like and you don't even know what's happening. It just like just happens one day, and I don't, like all of a sudden you're like shit, like I'm an <laughs> NFL player now. Like, what I'm would you want? Uh, well, yeah, you're Jack, I'm right? Jack. <laughs> what would you, so so you want to be? <laughs> who would you want to switch with? Oh, oh my gosh, um, I don't know. Who would I switch? Who would I switch lives with? As much as I admire the guy, definitely not Jesus. Seems like he had him pretty rough. <laughs> got a lot of wheels too. Um, uh, oh my gosh, I don't know. I'm like, I'm. I feel like so happy with my life. I don't know. I don't. I don't know if I would want to switch. I think uh, if I was forced to, like for a day, just for a day. Oh, okay, yeah, for a day. Oh, who would you um, Gosh, who I'm trying like to think of like for a day. who doesn't have trauma. No <laughs> one. Everyone has trauma. It would definitely be someone who is so physically different than me. Yeah. yeah. Just to see like Yao Ming, Mike Tyson. No, definitely. <laughs> <Mike Tyson. laughs> yeah. I don't even remember who Yao Ming is. Uh, yeah, of course. Just, yeah. Yeah. Of course. Like mm -hmm. somebody who's like so insanely tall. Just to <laughs> show oh, imagine, oh, like, yeah. imagine like it's like hold like up. It, the hold transition up. occurred and like you didn't even realize and you're getting out of bed, but you just keep like the seat, like you yeah. just see it just keeps going up and you're like, what's going on? What's yeah. Going on? <laughs> yeah. I, I definitely think it or or like I don't know, because I, I feel like I'm doing what I want in music and I, I love I love what I'm doing in music so it would seem like a waste for me to try to switch it with someone who's doing music yeah for a living. I think like my yeah. I don't know my my I I have like literally no other hobbies. <laughs> <laughs> so there's maybe okay I've got it. All right. Something that has to do with the ocean. Somebody who's got like either a career or something where they are scuba diving in the water with, I don't know, maybe the people who have to go clean the tanks at the <laughs> Georgia Aquarium. There you go. <laughs> Dude, it sounds it sounds so like silly, but that's an experience I would I would love. Mm -hmm. I just like I you have to I'm, be human. What if you would? What, what if you're like giant. Shamu for a day? <laughs> uh, no, he's got a bad rap. Oh, no. <laughs> but like. Around there, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> the glory days, All right. no, it would, it would, yeah, Harambe pre. <laughs> if you could change Harambe's life, yeah, yeah. how would you? No, I, I definitely think, like, yeah, I, I'm a giant uh lover of like the ocean. Um, and it, and I always told Sarah, I think I said, it, if I had a if uh, in another life, I always say, mm -hmm. if I had a different life, I would have done something with like the ocean mm -hmm. and i don't like you know i i don't regret my decisions of music or whatever but i i just i love that the ocean terrifies me so no. yeah but like it's definitely it's definitely <laughs> scary but it's i don't know it's just the coolest thing ever and and as as cliche and cheesy as this sounds everybody talks about like extraterrestrial life and aliens in space mm -hmm. and i'm just like man have you seen some of these creatures under the water oh, yeah. we know we know more about space than we do about yeah the ocean. Mm -hmm. yeah like I was those say, are aliens you ever think about like or ever ever look up like how much of the ocean has been on on uh undiscovered oh yeah yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah it's Pretty like a ton. yeah it's just, a ton. just for physically like, not being able to get yeah. there yeah like what could you potentially you know i don't know I don't know. Truth so like, I, don't know. I see I, angler yeah. fishes in my dreams. Yeah, just like <laughs> how terrifying they are. <laughs> it's like some something that has to do with the ocean, and it doesn't. It seems like so anti glamorous. Mm. It seems like oh, you know, you'd want to you want to switch lives with 
I don't know. You really celebrity of some sort. Even Tyler, probably not. I don't know about even Tyler. (laughs) Or or some other like very famous, influential, whatever. Richards. I wonder what it's like to be 117. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, like, but but honestly, I I think if I was to switch, it wouldn't be with something like super glamorous. It would be with someone who's just like has has that experience where they're able to like go into the ocean and scuba dive and like see some of like the craziest things because i don't know if i'll ever get that experience in life i mean Mm -hmm. it would be wonderful if i could Mm -hmm. um but i don't know i definitely i definitely think that i don't have a person in mind i don't know that's fine who who does that but someone who who their daily life experience is going and exploring the ocean there you go there's my answer that's sick fair enough well, there's so much stuff like you know you will never experience like yeah, oh, yeah. exactly ultimate like we can't do it all we're just you know, we're, we have a finite amount of time yeah yeah we're here for a short time so that's, that's unfortunate I, there's so I much of the world we'll never yeah. see make yeah. the best of it I was talking to Sarah about that too where I said I don't understand people who feel like what they what they call FOMO or whatever like fear of missing out because so like literally every decision in your life you're missing out on something yeah. Yeah. so like. The fact that we chose to be here right now talking to Johnny means that we are missing out on something else. Right. Who knows what it could have been. Oh, I like, much better. Know, this is cooler though. Yeah, yeah. This nah, is, yeah, yeah we we chose the better but, thing. But I'm right? just saying, like, no matter what, you know, if you choose to if you choose to wake up at seven o'clock or you choose to wake up at eight o'clock, mm-hmm. like in both decisions, if you wake up at seven, then you're missing out on an hour of sleep that you could have had. But if you yeah. wake up at eight, then you're missing out on an hour of daylight that you could have had. Exactly. You know, so like you're always missing out of something. That's why, like, yeah. I, I'm I'm a firm believer in just like finding contentment in like where you're at and like choosing to love the journey and love the life that you know that you have, regardless yeah. of your circumstance. Mm-hmm. And I know that's like very difficult difficult and different for <laughs> other people you know gratitude is a um, beautiful thing yeah you know and like i definitely think i i can't speak to people who are like going hungry or you know like that's that's horrible horrible situations that i don't don't wish upon anyone but for the majority of us in america you know like our circumstance is pretty good you know so you can choose to either be miserable about it or you can choose to you know, except that this is where you're at. And if you, if you want to grow and get out of it, that's awesome. Mm. But still like, I, I, I try not to let my circumstances affect my, my, my happiness level or my joy, you know? Yeah, of course. So yeah. that was a tangent off then something that's else. Right. That's yeah. Nice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, so just to kind of, kind of the way I feel about it. Yeah. Yeah. It's good. Good. We got pretty philosophical for a while now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I love, I love it. We can love talk too. philosophy all the time. I know. Yeah. I mean, that's you know, as you know, Johnny. Like that's what we do on our on our podcast. Like it's mm-hmm. usually pretty positivity oriented, mm-hmm. I guess, and about like bringing some kind of value to somebody's life where they can switch their mindsets. We try to be positive people around here. Yeah. Did you get a guest tonight? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, we, we yeah. Funny enough, we did. Yeah, nice. yeah. We got Mister. <laughs> <laughs> Who? Mister Dave Klein, aka Bjorn Hammerstein, oh, yeah. aka Dog <laughs> Bronx. <laughs> I look forward Those to that. Pretty one. cool names. <laughs> <laughs> They're pretty cool names. Love yeah, you're gonna, you're gonna love our episode. It's uh, he goes in the huge rant about how he hates Lowe's. It's great. <laughs> Good. Looking forward to it. <laughs> But funny. I'm also looking forward to May 17th. New first yes, full length album. Full length. Full length. It's gonna be great. I'd be so lying to period. say I'm not weak. Yeah. Yes. Thank you for uh mentioning the name. Of course. <laughs> say it again, because that, that might just be like you full say title. I'd be lying to say I'm not weak. I said that really like almost like in like superhero format. Oh, I, yeah. well, I kind of didn't like that. Yeah, I'd be lying to say I'm not weak. That is the uh, the title track as well. It's the last song off of the record. Mm. Um, I'm super proud of that one too. Yes. But um, yeah, that that one's going to drop at the music video on May 17th. Or actually, excuse me, the whole album is going to drop. But it is the title track. The music video is for the song I'd be lying to say I'm not weak. Right. I like that. I like it a lot. Yeah, it's a whole thing. (laughs) And then, of course, May 25th, Jazz Cafe, River Street Plains. 
Yes, so, um, release show. So yes. lots going on for you guys. I'm proud of you. I'm excited for you. And um hopefully I'll see you guys in person soon. Yeah. Yes. Deadcast two point oh. Deadcast two point oh. Come on I, up. Come I, on down. I would <laughs> yeah. love to switch bodies with Jake Jalen Hall, by the way. <laughs> I, sure. sure. I want to be him. <laughs> sure. Is there a way? The, the I mean like maybe in whatever, 15 dude. years. Have you ever heard of lucid dreaming? Yes. All right. You just have to. Commit. Wait. So I I know Gavin is uncomfortable because he's like kind of in the band but not really in the band <laughs> because it's right. just a weird timeline. Who would you switch bodies with? Oh, say also Jake Gyllenhaal. <laughs> also Jake Gyllenhaal. <laughs> no, I don't. Right, we're now. It's now. It's now what a if, cohesive answer. What if you want to change bodies with me as I'm changing bodies <laughs> with Jake Gyllenhaal? Oh, I know who. So I you can be me and Jake. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be so, pretty sick. Some weird format where like everything, <laughs> everything just starts shifting. Sort of like the the fear of like discovering the ocean and everything. I'm really into F1 and like automobiles, cars racing. Mm. Um, so Lewis Hamilton would be pretty sick because that would be horrifying. But I would bet that would be the most exhilarating experience. Uh, He's a racer. Yeah, he is an F1 racer. Just went to a Ferrari, you know. Have you ever been in a Tesla? Uh, no, but I I work for Hyundai and they have electric cars that are similar. I guess I, I valeted for about three <laughs> years and I have been in a Tesla. What if you change bodies with them? I don't for like, like I don't like the massive screens. Like randomly, you're just like. <laughs> <laughs> well, the reason I ask is my a buddy of mine has one, and yeah. I had it was my first time in it, and he yeah. insanely fast. He he. Uh, I can't say hit the gas because it's, it's not gas powered, right? Right. <laughs> but he, he hit it, and uh, gas. I, dude, I was just like, just, it, it, the yeah. transition. It's just so smooth. Like you're but like, not, I just like it was like an out of like body experience. Like yeah. I, my my brain was scrambled. You're just like here, you're just here, and you, if you just step on it, you're just so you're, you're like you, I don't know. Like all of a sudden, you're going 75 miles an hour, and you're like, yeah. what happened? <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I wasn't expecting hurts. it. I wasn't expecting yeah. that at all. It was just like torque, head flies back and holy shit. Yeah. It's like a roller coaster. It's, yeah. it's bizarre. There's a motor on each wheel and they get going quick. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> oh, what a time to be alive. Yeah. <laughs> Cyber truck. What a time to be alive. <laughs> I can't wait oh, until yeah. I see one in person. <laughs> I know. I know. It seems like, I don't know. Seems like mythology. For, like it's just like one of those things that you see. I see it on the screen all the time. Sure. But I'm just like the the day I see one in person, I'm just gonna be like, wait, it's real. It's real. <laughs> They're massive. Like the pictures don't do it justice. Yeah. Freaking yeah. Huge. Huh. Ready. I'm ready. Zero to sixty in like three seconds. Elon Musk, what a guy. <laughs> Agreed. Yeah, he's I guess putting, that... he's one putting their brain chips in people. We're all fucked. Yeah, nearly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll probably pass on that one. <laughs> but, but, uh, well, you, you say that, but like, that's like, I don't know. You, know, you think about it. It's like, what, what is next? I, you know? I think like, I don't know. I have this, this idea in my brain that it's going to like, the concept's going to be similar to like the iPhone. Right. Where like eventually just technology is just going to reach a point. Like it, this is going to like, it's going to become the, the, the tool than overwhelming amount of people use and it's yeah. it it's going to, something is going to be very up to date constantly and so like people are just going to jump on the bandwagon as as they as they did similar to this right. like <laughs> well, i don't know it, that's how it that plays out my surgery brain. to get this that's, <laughs> no, but that plays about, out my brain think about um you know email as uh, just like a simple thing like you, you talk about people like sending actual mail or sending a fax. Yeah. Like you laugh yeah. at those people. Like, what are you, what are you talking about? What are you doing? Yes. Yeah, right, Eventually yeah. something just becomes so commonplace that you're just like, whatever. Everyone does yeah. it. Everyone. Yeah. yeah. Like you, you get left behind. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's like you become, you'll, you'll become out of date. Yeah. That's scary. Thought. <laughs> it's like when like, flip yeah. came out. You might be dead by then. How do you get better than this? I hope. Yeah. I. I mean, I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. <laughs> I th I, yeah, I don't think that'll happen in my lifetime. I don't know though. But what if it's like? You'd be surprised. Yeah. yeah. Elon Musk is putting brain or Neuralink in people. Mm. Yeah. It's happening. What? What if like eventually like they figure out 
you know, like Neuralink eventually leads to a path of like, we can upgrade it and give you super speed or like super str- <laughs> Like what happens then? Yeah. What's like- <laughs> I think, uh, well, people are designing just- children now, you know, it's, I, it's insane. Oh, I did not know that. I don't you like can, that. I can design. No, I really, I don't like you can literally. Oh, wait, no, I do know that. Wait, maybe I have heard that. I think I just want to die. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm serious. I'm just, I'm just going to choose to end it at that point. Yeah, like, I, people talk about it all the time where they're like, oh, well, you know, if you could choose to live forever or whatever. And I was like, no, like I legitimately yeah. like in not a not an edgy kind of like I'm so cool kind of way, but like very legitimately want to die. And it's a hundred percent based off of what I believe it like happens after, right. After death. So like, you know, I want to live my life. I want to experience my life as it should have been and then die. And I will see you all in heaven. (laughs) Outside of the human experience. However, I I remember I just recently read an article talking about some type of an advancement in um, like uh, cat health. Okay. That there's there's something some could some type of Chinese or Japanese doctor found a possible um vaccine that could lead to that could eventually lead to like twenty plus additional years for your cat. Yo, so like that kind of I don't yeah, know. Yeah, me too. Yeah. I'm, I'm on board with that for my cat. That's what oh, I'm, okay. that's what I'm yeah. saying. Yeah. Yeah. Like sure. I said, like, hey, you can have so, Benny for another. I was, I was like, if my if my cat could live to like 40, dude, yes. <laughs> <laughs> that's fair. That's fair. Yeah. I'm sure. But no, I so like I, on, on that context. I, <laughs> no, when it's my time to go, I want to go. Yeah. And I'll. Uh, what if it was your cat? I what if there was what, very was allergic like, to cats? What, wait, let's, let's say there was a <laughs> hypothetical scenario where like you you were very attached to your pet, whatever it may be, and there was like some type of like let's let's call it, let's say it was let's say it was a cat in this circumstance, um, and there was like some type of neural link for your cat <laughs> that like eventually like upgraded its its technology to the point where like if you put this in your cat and, and down yeah. download the correct firmware like whatever scan it, the qr code yeah scan the qr code your <laughs> cat's gonna i don't know like Talk gain super strength i don't, yeah. I don't know I like think... you could like upgrade your cat like it turns <laughs> into a lion yeah, yeah, yeah. i think that's a very gray area because of like the way that i would perceive animals versus humans right because mm-hmm. like do you believe that animals have a soul? Yeah, now we're getting philosophical. See, now we're getting philosophical. philosophical. Yeah. Yeah. Animals yeah. go to heaven. Uh, yeah, all dogs. All go dogs to do go to heaven. Yes, yeah. for sure. Like, you know, if animal, like, if you're, if it doesn't have a soul, then I guess not what, blue jays. Though. You know, whatever. Yeah, blue no. jays go to hell. <laughs> <laughs> Their dogs go to heaven. Blue jays go to hell. <laughs> that's the one that, that's quotable. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, quote that on Instagram. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll make a, a reel out of that. Yeah, yeah. we're gonna Blue Jays go to Blue hell. Jays go to hell. We're gonna post some like honestly, so much hope, black and white cryptic thing, and it's just gonna be <laughs> Blue like, Jays go to <laughs> subtitle in Japanese. Yeah, <laughs> that's brilliant. I well, love that. Yeah. Back in home. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. That's freaking great. We want to publicly apologize to all you, <laughs> yeah. all you blue jays. Um, but I guess in all seriousness, if you're watching this prior to May 17th, uh, Gavin is not announced, but he is in this band. Yes, I may be, I may be blurred for this video. Yeah, but... no, May May 17th, which <laughs> is like really deep and low. His official <laughs> announcement. Yeah. Nobody knows I want, you. A, I want an hour and 45 minutes ignoring Gavin. And now, because I, I thought we were just, he's just like, he's not. No, remember, he's no it's okay. Yeah, 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 we can. He's not a mute. You can talk to him. Who? We're kind of, we were like downplaying it, kind of not downplaying it. I don't, just do what you want. Just yeah, like, yeah. You, there, can, you can just put a like, big blur like right here. It's a hologram. <laughs> A black, yeah. a black bar. Yeah, big, yeah, yeah. Black, and, black and bar, and like sensor bar. Make my voice really low, like one of those like criminal investigation. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was there. Yeah, session. no, like nothing, nothing like big official announcement until right. the seventeenth. Yeah, but, we're not like, publicizing yeah, anything until the album, but, but we're like we want to do around. more and we want him involved and. Oh, yeah. 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 Well, my five listeners are going to find out, so you better report. <laughs> yeah. It's it's definitely kind of it's Inside definitely a, a little odd with the timing and whatnot because. 
two of the music videos were like already shot before Gavin was in the band. Right. So like we only shot one with him in the band, but it is the title track and it is the one that's coming out on the 17th. Right. So, so it's, it's just like, like it's just like it was just I, like it's icing on the timing. cake, you know? It's, yeah, it was just yeah. like your timing. But I think like what is important or when you look like we did we absolutely did not want to like officially announce Gavin in the band and then come out with a music video that he's not in. Right. Right. Because that would look really bad. So I think like just retrospectively, when you look at the, the so much hope timeline, you'll be like, here's a music video with the three of them. Here's a music video with the three of them. Oh, look, Gavin's announced. Here's a music video with the four of them. It would look so weird to retrospectively look back and be like, look, there's a fourth member. And then uh, the music video is only three of them, yeah. you know? So well, here's a question kind of, for you. Yeah. Is there a band photo with the four of you? There is. Yeah, it exists, but you okay. won't see it until May, May 17th. Until May 17th. <laughs> what am I going to do for my, my thumbnail? Blur them out. <laughs> <laughs> you guys blur them out. I can't yeah. that yeah. <laughs> Just oh, make the, right. the photo just him jamming out on stage. Quick, like a sick, about? Yeah, a sick photo of Gavin. <laughs> hey. The <laughs> whole time it's just... Hey guys, what's going on? Yeah. <laughs> I'm with so much hope buried. It's Andrew. <laughs> Who's talking? <laughs> Who's not talking? <laughs> like, Crazy. Oh, they're starting about me. Yeah. Sweet. So, yeah, I mean, if you need to use the three of us, by all means, do what you need to do. Um, yeah. We're, we're, we're making it known. It is, so, like, I think I, I put in the group chat today, I was just like, you know what? Like, I want to look back at the like this record cycle and have Gavin there the whole time. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. Like, well, yeah, well, I was in it, like, but like, I wasn't yeah. really, you know. Well, you guys send me the photo. All right, we will. Pick, what, pick okay. whichever one you want. You're going you're gonna to get like nine nonsensical ones. And yeah, one I was gonna good say, one. yeah, until you get the real one. <laughs> yeah. like Jake Gyllenhaal. <laughs> it's just going to be four Jake Gyllenhaals. <laughs> well, I mean, I mean, if you, you like squint your eyes, I kind of look like him. Yeah. You know? <laughs> right. Just kidding. Yeah, right. Eric has an obsession in case you didn't know. What are you talking about? Yeah, brothers. What are you talking about? You, I know how to spell his last name. Do it. <laughs> so Do it right now. Okay. Brother. Put me on the spot. Do it. G, uh, G, uh, G, uh, yeah. G, 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 G,